Tokyo Disneyland is an amazing Japanese theme park resort. It consists of two theme parks, Tokyo Disneyland and what a lot of fans consider to be the best Disney park, Tokyo Disney Sea. In this park, guests can explore seven lands, or in this case, ports. From the Mediterranean harbor to the mysterious island, the park features a lot of themes. Now, an eighth port is being built, this time featuring several Disney characters and stories. So, let's explore Tokyo Disney Sea's new land, Fantasy Springs. Before we begin, I would like to announce that we now have a Patreon. You can now support the channel in a new way and receive exclusive content while doing so. To become a member, please visit patreon.com slash tmsn. Here you will find three different tiers, each has its own perks and price. So make sure to become a citizen, reporter or producer in Patreon if you're interested. Links are in the description. Currently, you can enter the park by passing under the incredible Miracosa Hotel. This will lead you into the Mediterranean Harbor. Then, you can explore the American Waterfront, Port Discovery, Mysterious Island, Mermaid Lagoon, Arabian Coast, and finally, Lost River Delta. If we take a look at a satellite image of the resort, we can clearly see the two theme parks and where the new expansion will be located. This huge parking lot will soon have some amazing attractions that we will explore ahead. In terms of size, it's very big. Here is an image from 2021 where you can see all the construction already in full swing and really put in perspective the scale of Fantasy Springs. This $2.3 billion expansion is the single most expensive one in a Disney park around the world. Actually, in any theme park. Ever. To put it in comparison, Galaxy's Edge cost around $1 billion. Disney themselves are not too worried about the cost, because Tokyo Disney Sea and Tokyo Disneyland is owned and operated by OLC, the Oriental Land Company. Therefore, they are the ones writing the check. So, let's explore what guests will find when entering in this brand new world. Fantasy Springs comes with a little bit of a background story. It's a magical spring that leads you to a world of Disney fantasy. If you were to compare it to a land, it would be Fantasyland if Fantasyland had the biggest budget ever. Here guests will be able to immerse themselves and explore the worlds of Tangled, Frozen and Peter Pan in each mini land, bringing a little bit more classic Disney into Disney Sea. These different worlds will be overlooked by an incredible new luxury building, the Fantasy Springs Hotel. Under the hotel you'll be able to find a new entrance to the park, dropping guests right in the middle of the action of this new land. If you stay here, you'll be checking in into one of 475 deluxe rooms. To enter via the park, you need to make your way to the amazing new Fantasy Springs themselves. In the rock work, there will be several classic Disney characters, something similar to Animal Kingdom's Tree of Life. This area will completely transform as the night falls. With the water now shining and the plants coming to life, I can't stop myself from comparing it to Pandora the World of Avatar, as that whole land magically transforms during the night. So, I know this will look amazing at dark. After passing under the rocks, you finally enter the new port and explore the worlds that unveil in front of you, starting with Tangled. Rapunzel's forest is in a valley and features the emblematic tower where she had lived. This area will also be quite different during the night, as the forest is bathed in the light coming from the tower and all the lamps in the paths. Here guests can find one restaurant, inspired by the hideout of the humorous thugs and the first Tangled attraction. We don't have much information about this ride, but it's known to be a boat ride. Also, during the last D23 Expo, we were shown a first look at the ride vehicles, as well as a poster showing the amazing city of Corona. So, I believe it will be similar to Frozen Ever After, but with the finale being the main part taking place in the Lantern Festival, 
which will be an incredible and memorable sight to see. Talking about Frozen, with this new expansion, Tokyo will also receive a brand new Arendelle. This version of the hit movie town will be much bigger than the ones being built in Hong Kong or Paris, as you have the town separated from the castle grounds by a bridge. The castle will be quite big and feature a table service restaurant where the guests will be invited into the castle to dine within those amazing walls. I could definitely see it become a character dining location with Queen Elsa and Princess Anna. Talking about the timeline, this will be set after the events of Frozen 1, and Elsa has embraced her powers and Arendelle has returned to its former glory. At the far end of the village, guests can see the snow-capped mountains with Elsa's ice palace on top. Similarly to other parks, these mountains will hide the massive show building which will hold the Frozen ride. Just like with the rest of the rides, we know little about it. But let's try and understand what it will be like. Tokyo Disneyland likes some exclusivity with their rides, so I think it's unlikely to be the same ride as the one being built in Hong Kong in Paris, which will be very similar to Epcot's version of Frozen Ever After. We did get a look at the boats, and they are pretty much the same as the ones from Hong Kong, only with small differences in the paint and accessories. This unfortunately confirms that it'll be a normal boat ride and won't use the magnetic technology from Shanghai's Pirates of the Caribbean. Due to the huge size of the show building, I'm betting that it'll be a bigger and better Frozen Ever After, with different scenes and maybe even story. But I guess only time will tell. With all that, we now arrive at the last miniland of Fantasy Springs, Peter Pan's Neverland. Here guests will be able to find a quick service restaurant and not one, but two attractions based around the classic Disney movie. Disneyland Paris fans will be familiar with this small part of Fantasy Springs, where Skull Rock meets the Jolly Roger. The smaller attraction will be based around Tinkerbell's Pixie Hollow, which from the concept arts seems to be an outdoor family attraction where guests are shrunk down to the size of Tinkerbell and explore the area where she lives. Here's a look at the very cute ride vehicles that will guide you around Pixie Hollow. The quick service restaurant will be themed around the Lost Boys hideout, which I hope receives some amazing theming. This now leaves us at the last and major ride being added to Tokyo Disney Sea, and that is the Peter Pan e-ticket ride which will see guests board a boat and follow the Lost Boys down a river. Tinkerbell then sprinkles the boat with pixie dust and guests fly through Neverland on an adventure that features iconic music and dynamic 3D imagery. With that explanation, the ride system may be different from what you are expecting. During D23, we were also shown the vehicles which did help us understand what the ride may look like. Joining all those elements as well as the fact of the huge size of the show building, I believe that this ride will have different systems, similar to Rise of the Resistance, which is mainly a trackless ride but also a motion simulator. My guess is that it's going to be very similar to Universal's The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man because of the shape of the vehicles, as well as this first look inside the ride, which scraps the rumors of it being the same system as The Simpsons ride. In order to feel like flying, it could enter a motion simulator, like Rise of the Resistance, or, because of how tall the building is, something more in the likes of Avatar Flight of Passage, but that could be a little more far-fetched. Either way, I can't wait to see how the final product looks like. The Peter Pan area looks to be amazing, and personally it will probably be my favorite, especially with those amazing Neverland mountains and scenery. Overall, Fantasy Springs is shaping up to be an incredible addition to what already is many people's favorite park. So, what are you most excited for in this huge expansion coming to Disney Sea? Let me know down below so we can have a chat. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're interested. And now, as always, thank you for watching, and that's a wrap.